Hello. Okay, let's look at the question here. Let gamma denote a curve. Y is equal to y of x, which is in the first quadrant. And let the point 1, comma 0 lie on it. Let the tangent to gamma at the point P intersect the y-axis at yp. If P, yp has length 1 for each point P on gamma, then which of the following options is or are correct? So this is a question with one or more answers right. Okay. Now, in such questions, you have to immediately look at the options as well. So when you look at the options, see, two options talk about a differential equation. In fact, dy by dx is given. And in other two options, y is given. And you, it's, it, you can also note that in b and d, dy by dx are negatives of each other. And similarly in a and c, y, the expression for, for y are negatives of each other. Okay. So we need to see which all options are correct in this particular question. So this is basically a locus problem. Why? Because there is a point P on the curve. There is an unknown curve. And what does it satisfy? Every single point P on this unknown curve satisfies some condition. Okay. That condition is given in the question. So we basically need to mathematically model that condition. Only thing is, there are tangents and things involved. So it is going to be a differential equation. So when you model it, you'll get a differential equation. You need to solve that differential equation and find the expression of the curve. That is all required. But there is some small trick involved in this. It is a straightforward problem because it's a normal usual uh, question from differential equations. Uh, but there is a small trick involved. I'll tell you that, uh, 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 tell you that soon. Mm, so let's get started. So first of all, you have to choose our point P as H comma K. Okay. So we, we need to find the locus of all P and P should be taken as H comma K. Now we need to have a tangent at P. P is some general point on the curve. We are going to find the equation of the tangent to P. So it is going to be Y minus K divided by X minus H is equal to D by DX evaluated at d by by dx evaluated at h comma k. Let me call this m. Let me call this m. Fine. Now this is a straight line and the straight line is intersecting y axis at some point yp. So let's find yp. yp is the point where the straight line intersects the y axis. So to find the coordinates of yp, Okay, and yp is nothing but the point where the straight line, the tangent, cuts the y-axis. So, you need to put set x is equal to 0. So, if you put x-axis, sorry, x-coordinate as 0, your y-coordinate is going to be k minus mh. It's easy, very easy from this expression. So, it is going to be k minus mh. Now, what is the condition? Pyp always has the length 1. So PYP, I'm going to equate PYP equal to 1 using distance formula. I'm going to write the square of PYP equal to 1, right? So PYP squared is equal to 1. So distance formula can be used here. So it is going to be H squared plus. Now it is uh, K minus K minus MH squared. So it is M squared H squared is equal to 1. So we have m squared h squared is equal to 1 minus h squared. So m squared is equal to 1 minus h squared by h squared. Right. So always remember you have to take m is equal to plus or minus root over 1 minus h squared by h squared. And this m is nothing but dy by dx of the curve evaluated at the point h comma k is equal to plus or minus root over 1 minus h square by h square. Now it's the time to get rid of h comma k. Now you can come back to our usual notation x comma y. So 
dy by dx evaluated at h comma k is this quantity which means dy by dx for the curve will be plus or minus root over 1 minus x square by x square right now there is a condition given in the question it clearly says that the curve is curve is there only in the first quarter see first quarter curve is there only in the first quarter curve is there only in the first quadrant so x is a positive number okay and one more thing we need to notice so this is plus or minus root over 1 minus x square by x and one more thing we need to notice the quantity inside the square root has to be positive so 1 minus x square has to be positive so 1 minus x square is positive and x is uh, positive so it means what x has to lie between 1 and 0 of course 1 is included 0 is not included if 0 is included this will be undefined so we clearly have x between 0 and 1 so that should be noted that is understood from this now we have dy by dx is equal to plus or minus root over 1 minus x square by x and when you look at the options, two options talk about these two cases. So we have two cases. We have dy by dx. We have dy by dx is equal to root over 1 minus x square by x or dy by dx is equal to minus root over 1 minus x square by x. Okay. Now we need to see whether the positive sign need to be chosen or the negative sign need to be chosen or both of them are valid. That is what we need to see. But the remarkable thing here is the point you should notice. See, this quantity, this entire quantity is always positive. The quantity inside the circle is positive. Similarly, this quantity here is positive. Okay. So, dy by dx in this case is always negative. dy by dx in this case is always positive. So, whether you choose this case or this case your dy by dx is always positive or always negative it cannot like uh, switch between positive and negative so derivative cannot toggle between positive and negative so there are two cases there may be two cases possible but in each case the sign of the derivative cannot keep going from positive to negative or negative to positive which is always fixed it's always either positive or it's always either negative that is what we need to realize so now we need to see whether we have to choose the negative case or positive case or both in fact if you look at the options both options are there we need to see whether we need to mark b or d or both all all, all may be possible because this is a question with one or more options right now there is another condition given in the question which we have not used yet the point 1 comma 0 lie on it okay so if we quickly try to look at this question the there is a point 1 comma 0 okay domain of the function is domain of the function is 0 to 1 domain of the function is 0 to 1 and there is a point 1 comma 0 on the curve okay and at x is equal to 1 you observe that derivative is 0 so if you have a curve curve is actually touching x axis at this point okay this is how a curve is okay now we know throughout the domain of the function the derivative is entirely positive or entirely negative Okay, it cannot switch between positive and negative. Now, let's see. Suppose if you take some x value here. Say, sup suppose some x0 value here. Suppose some x0 value here. The value of the function has to be positive because it cannot be negative. We already know that the curve does not lie below the x-axis because the curve lies entirely in the first quadrant. So, the value of the function cannot be here. It has to be somewhere here right so curve has to be something like this okay and from this you can note that when the function goes from x0 to 1 the value of the function is decreasing 
so it's a decreasing function it's a decreasing function so derivative has to be negative derivative derivative has to be negative and of course it, it cannot switch between positive and negative if it is negative it is negative always if it is positive it is always positive but we clearly see that it has to be negative okay so there is one more way to see that using uh, lagrange's mean value theorem using lmbt you can see that suppose you take some interval say some between some x0 and 1 if you take some interval you know that there will be some c value between these numbers where f dash of c becomes f of 1 minus f of x0 divided by 1 minus x0 okay and f of 1 is 0 so this is minus f of x0 divided by 1 minus x0 and look at this quantity this quantity is 1 minus x0 which is positive okay and the quantity f of x0 is positive because the curve is in the first quarter. So this quantity is negative. This entire quantity is negative. So this LMVT tells you that there is some at least one C value where derivative is negative. And we know that if derivative is taking negative at one point, it has to take negative at all points. Right. So that is confirmed. Okay. We have to choose the negative case so that is the most crucial part that is the turning point here right after that it is the regular integration you have to solve the differential equation and get the curve that is all left in the question okay so this is the most important part you have to understand that there are two cases arising but only one case is valid in this question because there are some conditions apart from the locus condition there are some other condition that need to be satisfied like it is passing through 1 comma 0 and things like that the curve is entirely in the first quadrant such conditions are given fine so that is it cool yes now let's try to solve this so this part is clear your dy by dx has to be negative divided by dx is equal to negative root over 1 minus x square by x so this is right and this is wrong okay now let's solve try to solve the differential equation so our differential equation is now dy by dx is equal to dy by dx is equal to negative root over 1 minus x squared divided by x and of course the domain of the function is between 0 and 1 okay now i will make a substitution and uh, try to solve this question uh, let me put i uh, will put sine inverse x is equal to theta okay of course when you make a substitution you have to write the range of that substituted variable theta will lie between what and what it lie between 0 and pi by 2 okay since sine inverse x is theta your x is sine theta okay your x is sine theta fine now let's try to solve this and before that we have to find so this is basically a differential equation uh, basically this is an integration problem in this format dx so y is integral root over 1 minus x square by x dx so we are basically doing the substitution part to find the integration for to solve the uh, integral right so your dx is nothing but cos theta t theta so this is minus integral root over 1 minus sine square theta dx is cos theta d theta divided by x is sine theta now this root over 1 minus sine square theta is root over cos square theta root over 1 minus sine square theta this is root over cos square theta and this is modulus of cos theta don't forget that okay this is modulus of cos theta and this is in the first quadrant 
theta is in the first quadrant so this is nothing but cos theta itself so this becomes minus integral cos squared theta d theta divided by sin theta fine so our integral is now you have to evaluate y as minus integral and cos square i'm going to replace it as 1 minus sin square theta divided by sin theta d theta so this is integral sin square theta minus 1 by sin theta so this is sin theta minus cosec theta d theta so this is going to be integral sin theta will be integral sin theta is going to be yeah it is minus cos theta and integral of minus cosec theta will be log mod cosec theta plus cot theta plus c plus c now we can substitute these values so this is going to be this is log of cosec theta plus cot theta is going to be 1 plus cos theta divided by sin theta minus cos theta plus c okay and clearly clearly cos theta is a positive quantity it is root over 1 minus x square okay so this is log of you can replace modulus because this is positive and this is positive 1 plus root over 1 minus x squared by x minus root over 1 minus x squared plus c this is your y here now it is given that the curve passes through 1 comma 0 so when you put 1 comma 0 you get c is equal to 0 c is equal to 0 so our y is going to be log of 1 plus root over 1 minus x square by x minus root over 1 minus x squared okay so log has positive sign the other quantity is negative sign let's check our answer yes so this is our answer okay so a and b are the answers fine Okay, I'll also quickly show you a simulation for the locus problem, how this curve behaves, okay. So, in this simulation, you can see that there is a curve, okay, and as expected, the derivative of the curve, the derivative geometrically translates to the slope of the tangent slope of the tangent is always making an opt obtuse angle so it is always yeah see this and if you draw a tangent at p if it is intersecting at y axis p y p is always a constant p y p is always one so that is our curve there cool Okay then.